now we are in 4.2 for the homogeneous differential equation second order okay we work on the second order in the standard form which is y double prime plus p <coughs> three x um px times y prime plus qx times y equals zero. The reduction of order, we, formula, y2. So for this case, we know y1, uh, y1 is given. Okay, y1 is given. We're gonna find y2. y2 is y1 multiplied by the integral of e to the negative integral px with respect to x divided by the second, the first solution squared. Okay, the e to the negative integral px, you, I'm sure you are familiar with, so that's a formula to find the mu or the integrating factor from the linear first order. But uh, it's, the way to prove it is pretty much the use of similar pattern as before, but um, the whole process you can see through when we get to the non-homogeneous way to find the second solution. That's how the e to the negative integral px comes out. But the formula here is convenient and it's a finished form. Just you just use it to find the second order, and it works for just the homogeneous equation where the right hand side is zero and y1 is known what you have to work out is just the antiderivative a couple times and depends on the technique that you're going to use for this problem okay the reduction of order formula for the homogeneous but it is the i would say it is the byproduct of the entire process of the method of reduction of order and the name will come from the way that we reduce the order from order two to order one when we get to the second part or the homogeneous part, okay? Uh, in this case, some of the examples in, in 4.3, when you have, like, if you already went over some of the, the notes in 4.3, when you find the solutions of the homogeneous equation, you have case one, case two, case three, right? Case one, case two. Um, for the case for the case one, you have two different solutions, so which is very typical way. But for the case number two, when you have repeated solution, repeated solution, but like you have only one m value from the from the auxiliary equation. How do you find the second solution? The first solution is very obvious, but the second solution, you have to multiply by X on top of it. And I'm gonna pick one of the examples um, from the 4.3, okay? Just hang on a second. Mm. For the repeated roots version of it. Okay, like that. Okay, for example, we have the equation y double prime plus 10 y prime plus 25 y equals zero. And this case, or you can see this, the, the way to obtain the, the auxiliary equation and get the two m's um, in 4.3. For this one, one of the solution is e to the negative five x and how do we find the second solution? If you already look at the note 4.3, we know that y2 is x times e to the negative x because we multiply another x, I mean, the factor x to it. Okay, so this 4.3, we know how to get it, but the process behind it, how we have to multiply by x to it is from the reduction of order formula here. So for this one, um, the equation is already in the standard form, okay? And the px, the px is 10, okay? The first solution or the, the solution one provided as e to the negative 5x to y2, which is, I'm gonna write the formula again. So y1 um, times integral of e to the negative p 
p of x integral sorry integral p of x dx and divided by y1 quantity squared so y1 is e to the negative 5x integral e to the negative the integral the p is 10 with respect to x and divided by y1 squared which is e to the negative 5x squared just be patient when you work on this kind of stuff okay <laughs> 1 over 5, 1 over e to the 5x. Integral, work on the integration until you are done. And then you will multiply by 1 over e to the 5x later. So e to the negative 10x as a result of the numerator, the integration there. And divided by e to the 5x to the second power, that's e to the negative 5x. Multiply by e to the negative 5x, which is e to the negative 10x. I just did more algebra. Now we have one, it's not necessary to write as a, the negative power, right? At the reciprocal, right? This one. So e to the negative 5x, sorry, write that way. So it will keep the same form. And the integration, the integrand now is just one with respect to x. And you're going to get e to the negative 5x multiplied by x. You do not have to add C or anything, because we are looking at the solution in the fundamental set of solution. Okay, fundamental set of solution. You can think about just the basic, basic function, no concern of integration. And the coefficient in the front here is, is nothing to do with it. As one of the, the earlier part of the 4.1, the corollary to that theorem, if y1 is the solution, the constant multiplied to y1 is still the solution. So your target is just to pick the basic function for the fundamental set of solution. So this one, we ignore the constant, the constant of integration. We ignore the coefficient. We just don't have to do anything with that. So then whatever the main piece or the, the function form that you see, that is your second solution. So ui2 is x e to the negative 5x. And it's the same as the way that we, we, we find out the case two solution in 4.3. Okay. So this is kind of the use of 4.2 as a supporting, use it as a supporting part or the concept behind how to obtain the solution for each case of um, of the 4.3 or the, the solution of the homogeneous equation with the constant coefficient, okay? From the exam, uh, examples on the notes, most of them you see the coefficient in front of the term, just ignore the coefficient. Again, this is about the fundamental set of solution. You just pick the core piece of the function out, no integration, no constant integration. Do not have to worry about those because this is the process behind the scene, how to obtain all solution or the rest of the solution if one is known. 